Jane McDonald. Did someone mention Cruise? I caught the cruising bug more than 20 years ago when I was working as a singer on a ship. See, when I were on the ships, I had no window. I used to have to put the television on to see what type of day it was. It's not just us Brits who are crazy about cruising. Last year, 25.8 million holidaymakers worldwide choose to cruise. There's a cruise for everyone. There's quiet cruises, there's party cruises, there's island cruises, there's river cruises. And I'm just going to carry on cruising till I've found you, your perfect cruise. Try stopping me. There's a cocktail bar over there. <laughs> I like big ships, small ships, thin ships, fat ships, friendships, relationships. I like all ships. Now I'm off to waters unknown. I'm treating myself to some cool Scandi style in the Baltic on this beauty, the Viking sky. Welcome to my yacht. It's dead posh. It's full of surprises. All the cabins have a balcony, and I do mean all of them. And there's even real art everywhere. It does look like Susan Wilde, doesn't it? It's like being on a private yacht, an Abramovich-sized one. Cheers! Cheers! Hi, and welcome to Copenhagen, which means, hey up, we're in Copenhagen. And this is where my Baltic adventure begins. It's the capital of Denmark, and I haven't been here for about 15 years. Well, well more like 20, actually. Its most famous landmarks are the Tivoli Gardens, this is them, Hans Christian Andersen's house, this is it, and the Little Mermaid, there she is. The Little Mermaid in Danish is Lila Halflu. You see, you're impressed now, aren't you? <laughs> so you should be. Can you actually speak Danish? Well, my husband were Danish, so I had to say a few things like, yes, good day, which means I love you. But I've stopped having foreign boyfriends now. I'm just sticking to English. And they live in the same country, so it's a bit cheaper. In an homage to Scandi Noir, today I'm wearing Denmark's most famous jumper. <laughs> I bet they all think I'm from the killing. <laughs> Got right jumping on. Of course. Oh, thank you, please. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you, you so too. Okay. You movie star or? Uh, oh Michael? yeah, big movie star. Oh, really? I'm so happy. Here. <laughs> so okay. Okay. Nice Lovely. day. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Okay, bye. bye. Thanks so much. <laughs> Wonderful. I think she thought I was that Sophie Grabble from The Killing, <laughs> which of course I'm not. I don't need to be a detective to tell you I've sniffed out another Danish icon, a hot dog stand. Come to Denmark, you have got to have one of their uh, hot dogs, cos they are the best ever. Hi. Hi. Uh, could I have the, um, the best seller, the Fransk hot dog? What, what's the difference? The size. Oh, the Big size. Of course. Hey, sometimes size doesn't matter. Um, uh, yeah, the small one? Yeah. A Danish hot dog is like no other. Yes, it's just a sausage in a bun, but it's got a remoulade sauce. Sounds posh, but it's just mayonnaise, mustard and pickled cucumber. I'm going to let you have a taste in a minute. You can't have a taste, cos you can't get through the telly. But you can have a taste, and it's really, really nice. Tooth and thack. That's a sausage with a message. That sausage is saying, eat me. Where are you from? Are you from Denmark? Yes. Denmark, yeah. So you're getting married? Of course yeah, you are. <laughs> this is fantastic! <laughs> oh, well, good luck. Bye, Pavel. Pavel. Oh, bless them. Oh, I hope she's as happy as we all thought we were going to be. <laughs> And here she is, my home for the next week. If she were a movie star, she'd be Scarlett Johansson. That's how gorgeous she is. Look at that. Do you know, every time you turn up to a cruise ship, it takes your breath away. Come on. She's got 900 passengers on board, and I'm the last to join, so now it's 901. We're setting off to Copenhagen, sailing through the land of the Vikings and across the Baltic to Tallinn in Estonia, next into Russia and St. Petersburg. 
from there back into the Baltic and Helsinki, capital of Finland, and then off to Scandinavia and Stockholm. Mamma mia, I'll need a lie down after all that. Right. Ah, hello. hello. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. This is only Viking Sky's fifth cruise, and everything inside is box fresh and brand new. <gasps> These pictures and everything. I don't think I've ever, ever seen a ship like this ever. So classy. This is the most exciting bit because I'm going to see where my room is. Come on, come in. It's like a millionaire's house, isn't it? This is what you see on the telly, you know, in grand designs and stuff like that. This is. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh my goodness <laughs> me! It's bigger than my house. Look at this, I've got a sofa. <laughs> oh my god, I've got a suite! For this, look at this day dim. Oh, this is sheer and utter luxury. There's like big tellies everywhere. Mm, I love a bathroom. Oh, I've got a sauna. Oh, look at this. You can sit there in the nuddy and nobody can see you. Mind you, I'm in the owner's suite. <laughs> in the owner's suite! I hope you don't want to come home. Oh, wow. Well, if this is what having money is all about, I want some. Because <laughs> this is just a different world. I've just found out the word Viking means to travel on water. Well, these guys have nailed it. And I'm Viking round the Baltic. Look at me. Oh, ho, ho. Ah, look! Oh, you will not see me for the rest of the cruise now. I would like to say cheers. Welcome aboard. Coming up, I have a Disney princess moment in Tallinn. It's lovely. Feels like I'm in Beauty and the Beast. And I get to brush up my language skills. How do you say it here, pussy pussy? <laughs> it's Russian for calling a cat. I'm living the dream on my first Baltic cruise. We're at sea all day today and there's loads of nothing to do. Heaven. Hello. It's the time for the camera on the stick. I'm going for a wander because I find it a lot easier just having this than that lot. All right? I'm off. Hi. Hello. Oh, this is lovely. It's not like a ship, it's like a very posh hotel. Beautifully architected. Is that a word? Architected? It's been beautifully designed. We'll use that. Can you believe that I'm in the Baltics? I think we must be doing something right, because every time we go on a ship, we get beautiful weather. Oh, wow. Oh, this is a bit fab, isn't it? Hello. Welcome to my yacht. Something I've noticed is everywhere you look, you can see the sea. Don't laugh. Some ships I've been on, you need a telescope to get a glimpse of a wave anywhere. Not this one. Right. There's something I need to do. Oh! 
What are you doing here? I've got no makeup on or anything. Right, hang on a minute. I need to find the laundrette. Laundrette. Yep, that's right. I did say laundrette. Hello. Hi, Hello. It's what sea days are for, relaxing and watching your smalls. So how do we use these, then? Oh, well, the directions are not easy to follow. OK, oh, no. they're written by some engineer, not by a woman. So preparing laundry, load laundry, close the door, choose the programme, choose the temperature, choose spin speed, choose something flipping, no? D, can you give me a lesson? I could give you a wonderful lesson. But it's nice to just come down and be normal. And, and everybody's normal, aren't they? Because we all do our own washing. Now, I was on a world cruise, and there was a woman, and she used to put out of order on a dryer. <gasps> yeah. So this lady always had a washer and always had a dryer. Because she used to just come in and... Yeah. Yeah. Out of order sign is. Do you? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but it can get like actually this. quite heated when you can't get a washer, and somebody comes in and just whips it. Uh, which happens quite a lot. Et voila. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Well, you all know the secret now, no. don't you? <laughs> right, Dee. Oh, she's put some more in. Right, I need an hour. Uh -huh. right. You didn't get the sign out. <laughs> need to get the sign. <laughs> I need to do what that lady did and get that sign out. I've missed my slot. I'm so sorry. Right. Up here, we're a 1,000 miles northeast of Wakefield. And let me tell you, the sunsets alone are worth the trip. I mean, this isn't even one of the special ones, but look at that. And if that's not enough, the laundrette's empty and I can dry my smalls. Magic. We've crossed the Baltic on our way to Tallinn, capital of Estonia. It sounds like my kind of place. It's hosted Eurovision, and at its heart is a fairy tale medieval town. What's not to love? This is a destination cruise where you go to all these amazing places where it's all laid on for you, um, which is, is really good because that's all inclusive in the price. So you can have a look and, um, and pick something that you really think, oh, I wouldn't mind doing that. Instead of taking a chance where you're paying for it, um, you would take a chance when you're not. Is that just me being tight? <laughs> But it's probably true of most people, because we don't like wasting money, do we? Now, don't faint, but I'm going to give you some facts and figures. 440,000 people live in Tallinn, but last year, 4,252,828 tourists dropped in, just like me. Looks like they're all here now, if I'm honest. Hello. Yeah. We were just going to go off and have a wander. Uh, what, do you recommend anywhere that we should see? Yes, of course, the view platform, and I, I think it's a must because there you can see the whole view on the town. And that's up there, is it? Like this. Oh, that way and then right. Yeah. What a beautiful day. I'm in Estonia. I've ditched the crew. It's just me and you. been told to come up here and see this amazing view. Get ready to be amazed. Is that it? I mean, no disrespect, but looks like Wakefield. Do you think that's pretty? Uh, yes. I live here. It's nice view. It's an old part of town from first Estonian Republic. It's not doing it for me. I'd like a better view than that. OK. Is so that all right? Let's go to old part of town. Old part? Oh, you're coming with me? Yeah. What's your name? Sergey. Sergey? Yeah. Oh, I'm Jane. Very pleased to meet you. But, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm now going down the ginnel with a strange man I've just picked up in Estonia. <laughs> Oh, now he's on his phone. But this looks more like it. It's lovely. Feels like I'm in Beauty and the Beast. Hang on a minute. I recognise him. Are you Patrick? Oh. Ah! 
Oh, no. I couldn't resist when you oh. said, I'm Jane. Oh, that is so good. How are you? I'm great. Nice to meet you in the flesh, finally. Have a great day. Lovely to meet you. Bye, Jane. Bye. I found me Patrick. He's such a sweet man. <laughs> All that walking and talking's made me a bit peckish, and I know just what I want and where to get it. <laughs> So this is the highlight of most cruisers. It's called afternoon tea. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Come and take me. Look, can oh, I? Yes, can I? Thank, thank you so thank much. You. I'll be on my way. Right, I'm on my way. See? A stranger's a friend. You just haven't met yet. Hi, Jane. Lovely to see you. Good to see you. This is Terry. Hi, Terry. Really nice to meet you. The ship is full, but there's never anybody about. No, there's no lines except for at the gelato bar. Oh, the gelato bar. That's about 16. I better not go anywhere near that. I think they're going to have to get a hoist or a crane to get me off. Terry might have to dash off due to the fact that she's waiting for a machine in the laundry. <laughs> and we were just talking about that yesterday. And she says, I will have to leave afternoon yeah, tea my... to get it's the laundry. <laughs> It's all, you put it on a timer, yeah. and then you've got to go get it, or it may be gone. <laughs> I'll see you. Thank you. I'll see you. Thank you. Enjoy your tea. Thank you very much. It's full steam ahead, and we leave Estonia and sail to St. Petersburg, and Russia with love. I'm in Russia. I'm very excited because I've never been in. It's, it's something yet. Oh, look, I nearly walked through a window then. It's quite cold, it's quite nippy, but the Russians are made of hard stuff. I bet you I've got a vest on or anything. St. Petersburg used to be Leningrad. Well, it was always St. Petersburg, then it was Leningrad. Now it's St. Petersburg again. Got that? Good. It's home to the Hermitage. Hermitage? Anyway, it's a big museum. It's probably the most famous building in St. Petersburg. I'm supposed to know something about it, but as usual, I've known nothing. So I've looked it up and it says the Hermitage is huge. It has 1,057 rooms, 117 staircases. Look at uh, morning. Ah. Hey, oh. I just want to go and punch the lights out. <laughs> and they say to get around all the exhibits in the Hermitage, you will need to spend 11 years of your life and walk 22 kilometres. I can't stay that long. The ship goes tomorrow. If I'm honest, culture isn't really my thing. Cats, however, now you're talking. I'm heading for the cellars. No, not for the wine, just you wait. I've just been told that in every metal door, there's a cat flap, and this sign says, it's cold, can you please close the door to keep everybody warm and cats? I might have just made a few words up there, but that's basically what that poster says. But I love the fact that there's a cat flap in every single door. It must be freezing. Right, in we go. Cats have lived at the Hermitage since 1745, when Empress Elizabeth decreed that they live in the cellars. They protected the artworks from mice and rats. The paintings are long gone, but the cats are still here and even have their own PR lady. Of course, it does not look very attractive, but... No, well, no, it's a cat's bed, isn't it? I mean, uh, to be quite honest, Maria, yeah. my bed looks similar. Be careful. Cat, the danger, cats. Are they dangerous, cat? No, it's for the drivers. Mm. And this is our private and modest kids' house. Upstairs and outside, it's all glitzy and gold. Down here, where the pussy posse hang out, things are a bit more down home. How do you say, here, pussy pussy? <laughs> That's in Russian, is it? It's K, K and S. It's Russian for calling a cat. Yeah. Oh. Maybe you have got a connection with cats because 
I was in Cats in Blackpool, and I'm sure there's an old Grizz down here somewhere. There'll be a Grizzabella somewhere. Look at this one, he's such a flirt. You're yes. such a flirt, you are lucky. Yeah. Yes. That's Rum Tug Tugger, without a doubt. Sometimes it looks like some, something between house for the homeless children and house for old people, oh. yes. The dog. Oh my Basement. goodness me, look at that. To this. Yeah. Wow. It's like Nadia. <laughs> you just come out of a wardrobe into something yes. like this. It's like a different country. Yeah. I reckon it's a bit like Narnia. I no. meant that. It's like Narnia. You come out of something which is really dim and dark and and then woof, opulence. Wow. Look at that. So lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Yes. Is it true? Bye. Hope to see you soon. I hope so. Bye. Bye. Everything here is monumental. The scale is just, well, off the scale. There's gold everywhere on the buildings, but the most in-your-face thing I've seen is this, the Church of the Spilled Blood. It's like a cross between a church and a cake. It's unbelievable. Look at that. I would never have come to Russia in a million years because of my perception of it. And I would have missed this unbelievable beauty. And I've got to an age now where I don't want to sit at a pool and drink a pina colada every day. I want to get out and see a bit of the world. That's just what I think personally, anyway. I could be wrong. You might still want to sit and have a pina colada at a pool. <laughs> Don't blame you. <laughs> Actually, I want to do that as well. <laughs> Coming up, I go underground, Soviet style. I can't believe this is the truth. And there's an awkward moment with a Russian doll. <laughs> that was not me. What's all the racket? Good morning. How are we? How are you? Are you? Oh, I'm just in heaven. We're still in St. Petersburg, and there's a lot to do, but I'm not budging till I've had my breakfast. How do you think your diet's going to go? My diet? <laughs> it's gone through the roof, hasn't it? You can diet all year, but when you come on a cruise, chill out, man. Special occasions like cruising, Christmas, birthdays, Easter. <laughs> Any holiday, really. Life is too short to be forever on a diet. I'm having a waffle. Thank you so very much. How beautifully served is that? It's like a piece of art. I don't even want to eat it. I am lying. I really want to eat it. <laughs> so how do you normally have, have waffles? Yes, have them a lot these are thicker. nice and thin. I like them because they're thin. Yeah. Half yeah. the guilt. Half the guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I followed the tourist trail, but today, I'm exploring a different sort of St. Petersburg, the one the St. Petersburgers know. And first off, I'm going underground. Oh, blimey. Oh, this is a bit posh for a tube. Looks like Caesar's Palace. What do I do, get a ticket? Insert your card. No? Oh, that's a bank. I think that's a cash machine. Yeah, it is. In Soviet Russia, even the metro was used as propaganda. Yes, it was mass transport for the masses, but why shouldn't stations be like the palaces above ground? Here, there are wide sweeping staircases, marble and grandeur everywhere. Looks like John Lewis's. <laughs> I can't 
can't believe this is the truth. I mean, look at this. There's more chandeliers than in Liberace's living room, and that's saying something. You've got crystal columns on your tube station. <laughs> Only in Russia. Every day, more than two and a half million St. Petersburgers use the Metro, and all journeys cost less than 65p. The stations may be different, but travelling underground is much the same as anywhere else. People don't talk much on the tube in England, either. the escalators the poshest I've ever seen. But now I'm after something more Russian than caviar and easier to keep on my mantelpiece. <laughs> I will, Look I... at this! Oh my goodness me! So I want to show you the biggest madroshka what biggest we have. One. What is the story behind a Russian doll then? Why, why are they so popular? So the the, because of the symbol of a uh, family, you can see the inside, there are 30 pieces inside. 30? 30, yeah. Whoa, 30 that's pieces. a big family. Yeah, so, and you can see there only the, the woman faces. Yeah. And the mother, the, the most uh, important. important on the family. Is that so, what you think in Russia? That women are the most important? Yes, yes. I like that. How much is that? So, this is uh, uh, 400,000 rubles. 400,000 rubles? Yeah. How much is that in pounds? The 5,600... 5,628 quid for a doll? Yeah. Or oh, 30 of them. These dolls are all hand-painted and each tells a different story. High-end matrushkas are prized by collectors, including sentimental oligarchs, who have been known to commission dolls studded with jewels that cost millions of dollars. So these are really a bit of a bargain. You can see why they're worth such a lot of money. And the inside. <laughs> that was not me. That was not me. It's me, it's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure about these dolls. I love a knick-knack like anyone else, but these are halfway between knick-knack and art. And you know me and art. Celebrity dolls, now you're talking. Wow. Presidents. Oh! That looks like me. <laughs> that actually looks like me. Anthony. Could you let me have a look at this one? That's definitely me. Oh my God, all of a sudden, I really like these. <laughs> oh, oh, these are fabulous. Look, I've got my own Russian doll. Matrutska, Matrutska McDonald. So how, how on earth did this happen? I'm sorry, I don't know who it is. Did this happen? Who? Ah, seriously? Did you know? <laughs> it's you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. I'm surprised. I'm so, surprised, yeah. No, really My nice. hair was a lot lighter. Obviously, I'm much younger. You're, in, beautiful, in you're beautiful in a natural band than Droshkas. <laughs> Did you hear that? You got that on camera that he says I'm much more beautiful in the flesh. That's all I'm going to say. I think I need a hug. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, I love my job. I know when to quit, and nothing's going to top my Matrushka moment, so I think it's time to say, Proche St. Petersburg. That's Russian for Arrivederci. Viewers of a nervous disposition, look away now. Actually, that's not a look for camera, is it? That's not a look for the viewers to see me in. They used to see me looking glamorous. Look, these need to be here because these, these lovely rollers that we heat up in this, it's like a microwave for rollers. And they're absolutely brilliant, but they burn me looks. So I've got to put these in. It's a look, isn't it? I mean, this is all my secrets going now, my heated rollers, and actually, they must know this isn't natural. It's not natural here. No. Two um, Sandra and Roberts for a glass of champagne, but there's only two champagne glasses in their cabin, so you've got to bring your own glasses. Sure. Yes, it's Thank fine. you so much. Nice to see you. You're oh. very welcome. Thank you. Oh, I love this. Welcome room. to our cabin. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's, yeah. It is. Oh, it's so tidy. Good. Ready to go. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah.
Petersburg, it's a quick sail to Helsinki, capital of Finland. I have no idea what to expect, but bring it on. Hey. Where are you going? I'm going to Helsinki. I'm in Finland. I'm going to Helsinki in the sound centre. Cruise is like being on a magic carpet ride. Because you get on board, you unpack, and then you think, I want to be in Copenhagen. Whoosh! It takes you there. And then you think, I want to be in St. Petersburg. And it goes, whoosh! And you're there. And then you want to be in Helsinki. And it's, whoosh! And you're there. How fab is that? We're on a magic carpet ride. I must admit, there's some beautiful people over here. Really stunning looking people. And, uh, I'd love to just sit and people watch all day. I love just sitting down in a cafe and watching the world go by. Finland is fab. Anyone or anything can become a design icon here. I've been told by the team that Jutta has something very special in a shop, but they won't tell me exactly what it is. Hello, Hello. I'm Jane, by the way. Hi, I'm Jutta. Welcome. Jutta. Jutta, yes. Jutta. Welcome. I love this. This is all my photographs. I do the design myself. This is actually taken from the, uh, just from my uh, shop. Really? Door, yes. Here is something really, really new. Yeah. This is, um, the original paintings are done by a Finnish bear called Juuso. A, a real living, bear? Real living bear. Not that... like Bear grills. More like Yogi Bear. This is, this is a real living bear. A real, like, A real bear. live bear. How does he paint? He doesn't have a brush. He uses no. his paws. You can see these are That's his a paw mark. mark. Yes. Claws. Claws, yeah. And here. But oh, yeah. I, I haven't yet uh, gotten to meet you, so, but I will definitely go and meet you so this uh, this summer. And I've heard that I'm going to be able, because I really want to kiss you, so, and I want to get a picture of me and you so kissing. So that's going to be really cool. You might bite your kidding. head off. Have you not seen that film with Brad Pitt? Which one? The one where he gets mauled by a bear. Leonardo DiCaprio. I meant him. Have you not seen the film with Leonardo DiCaprio? No. Where he's, he's got a bear. I've done and it, I no? no? I wouldn't watch it just before you go. OK. All OK. Right. I admire you so much for kissing a bear. But then again, you're selling his art, so why not? I'm not sure bear art's my thing, if you follow me drift. But well, I do like that. That's Shadows of Twig. Oops, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I've just spent 300 quid on cushion covers. But they are beautiful and worth every penny. Ed, they are worth every penny. Don't worry. Everywhere you look, once again, is a postcard. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I need to walk around. I need to walk around the ship. <laughs> Hi, I'm gonna knock a door. <laughs> A week of cruising luxury is coming to an end, and I wish it could go on forever. You know, I love this part of the world. And that seagull's been with us all that time. There are more than 30,000 islands in the Swedish archipelago, and we're sailing past loads of them as we head into Stockholm, our final destination. It's going to take us an hour to get there, which means just enough time for an outing with the camera on my stick. Been on this ship now for quite a few days. I still get lost. That's something you will always do. Listen, tip as well. Always find out where your loos are. Because you never know. Look 
clear a bird. Ah. <laughs> I like the birds going in the background. That's nice, isn't it? I suppose it feels like you're doing your ablutions in the woods. Like the bears do. Look at this tree. My God, it smells like Christmas. That's got to be fake. Do they come and spray it every day? Or is it real? It's probably real. You see, we live in such a fake world, don't we? We think everything's fake. <coughs> Excuse me. It'll teach me to go around sniffing trees. Everywhere you look, there's amazing pieces of art. See, to me, that just looks like a very young Susan Boyle. It does look like Susan Boyle, doesn't it? Well, you've had another tour of the ship. It's fabulous. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed this beautiful sailing as we made our way through these may be the capital of Sweden and one of the most beautiful cities in the Baltic, but for me, there's only one thing to do today. No, it's not a trip to Ikea to eat meatballs. I'm going to pay homage to Sweden's greatest ever export, something that quite literally changed my life. And no, not a Volvo. We are at the Abbott Museum. Such a great logo. I didn't think I would be this excited, <laughs> but I'm really excited, Emily. You I are, am. for real. I am. This is uh, a little exhibition about the Eurovision Song Contest. 1974 Waterloo. Yeah. Those so this outfits. is the original outfit. Oh my goodness me! I can't believe I'm looking at the the very outfits that I watched them winning. Ing-Marie is the director of the ABBA Museum, but started working with the band in the 1970s. Hair, makeup and wardrobe. This is me. Oh, look at On you! On the tour in 79, doing the, the washing, washing. Oh, love. Between the truck and the <laughs> post. I think it's great that you've made it work. You've made it work. That's all oh. you need to do. They were genuinely happy on tour, weren't they? Yeah, they were. But, you know, to be really honest, they, they didn't like touring that much. Mm. Frida loved to be on stage, mm. yes. Uh, she was quite shy in front of people off stage. I know that Benny wasn't keen on touring because he was such a perfectionist when it comes to music. So if something sounds like this on a record, it has to sound like that live. For the stage now, I can do it. You can be the fifth member. Oh, oh my God! I'm gonna be the fifth member of Alpha. Absolutely elated, puffed out, taken back nostalgically. When you hear all those amazing songs, see how it was all made, you could practically touch. You actually feel as if Abba are here. It's bizarre. Oh, look at that suit. Mm. Look at that. You can talk to whoever is calling. But really? It's only these four. That's Frida. It's fabulous. What a great time I've had here. Thank you. Every destination on this cruise never would have been something I would have picked in a million years. Uh, I've been so shocked at how lovely it is and how really I haven't explored this wonderful world that we live in. I would definitely come back without a doubt. I don't want to talk about things we've gone through. 
though it's hurting me Now it's history I've played all my cards And that's what you've done too Nothing more to say No more ace to play I'm on top of the world, literally. I'm cruising round a rugged but breathtaking island with freezing temperatures. Spectacular wildlife. Oh, look at that. The cutest creatures. Little puffy. And the greatest light show on earth. Have their hands full when a bad weather threatens a used wet wipe Poonami in filthy Britain SOS. Next, a profile of the shy, retiring spare to an heir who became one of our favourite monarchs against all odds, George VI, the accidental king. It's brand new after the break.